I don't know if you've ever been on YouTube and uh, seen examples of Obama when the teleprompter falls down, stops working. He doesn't know where his next word's coming from. And people have perceived Obama as a, an intelligent man. This says delusion, assuming a level of knowledge that isn't there. Uh, because what they're doing is they're comparing Obama with Bush. And, you know, as the saying goes, slow horses look fast when they're running past trees. Um, he's not intelligent at all. He's an actor. And what we have is a secret agenda to introduce this police state and centralized control. And this is the movie designed to bring the secret agenda into being through legislation and change in society without people realizing that that exists. That's why the mainstream media is a movie. I call journalists um, movie correspondents. That's what they are, mostly. Uh, and so when you, when you have this situation with uh, Obama, just, it's like the Pied Piper. Change, change. The election of Obama was a massive mind control ex uh, uh, operation. This says um, Tony Blair. That, he's the black Tony Blair. He's the white Obama. Will you lie first, Tony, or shall I? Oh, after you, Barack. These people lie by reflex action. It's part of their daily, um, their daily life. And while um, Obama was claimed to be the people's man, his major funder um, was Goldman Sachs and a stream of Wall Street names. They're going to vote for someone who's going to be for the people. This is why Obama has been connected to so many rogues and people like this guy, Tony Resco, ended up in, in jail for fraud. He was uh, responsible for so much of, of Obama's uh, political career. And Obama's two... Um, Close manipulators and controllers also are Soros and this guy, Sabignu Brzezinski, um, the national security advisor to Jimmy Carter. Brzezinski, like I said earlier, has been uh, mentoring and bringing him through since at least the 1980s to become president at this time, all orchestrated. And this is a book that a Brzezinski um, wrote in 1970... What's that? Um, 40 years ago. Um, in which he said this, predicting the future. Predicting the future, explaining the future he knew was coming. The technotronic era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Such a society would be dominated by an elite unrestrained by traditional values. Soon it will be possible to assert almost continuous surveillance over every citizen and maintain up-to-date complete files containing even the most personal information about the citizen. These files will be subject to instantaneous retrieval by the authorities. And he knew because he's an insider, Brzezinski. That's why he's on Obama's shoulder. He, along with this man, David Rockefeller, created in 1973 an organization called the Trilateral Commission. This is part of a network of organizations controlled by a secret society in London called the Round Table, or Britain anyway, England. The first one was the Royal Institute of International Affairs, 1921. Then came the Council on Foreign Relations in America, 19, um, uh, what was that, 21? That was 21, that was 1920. Then came the, Builder, no, the United Nations after the Second World War. Then came the Bilderberg Group, 1954. Uh, there was the Club of Rome in 1968. That was created to use the environment as a, a, a means of controlling the people. And the Trilateral Commission of Brzezinski and Rockefeller came in 1973. And these work as one unit to push this agenda forward. And the number of politicians that are members of these groups uh, is extraordinary. Now, what Brzezinski talks about, and if Brzezinski talks about it, it's the agenda, is something called Eurasia. And he says that if you control the area known as Eurasia, you control the world, and that um, they must get control of Eurasia. Now, this is a key part of Eurasia, which goes from basically Europe across to, to China and into China. And it's very interesting, because they want to um, control this area, for instance, all the way to China. 
So you've got Georgia in Eurasia, you've got the Ukraine in Eurasia, which were these people's revolutions, it says here. You've got Kyrgyzstan, where they've done the same twice. And then over here is Israel, with, say, control. They're now demonizing Syria, because they want that. They're already in Iraq, they're already in Afghanistan, and now they're destabilizing in so many ways Pakistan, which takes them right to the Chinese border. There's one major country in the way of that whole deal, and that's this one. And that's why they want Iran. It's nothing to do with uh, nuclear bloody weapons. It's finding an excuse to take that so that they could virtually complete the job, apart from Syria, of taking that whole area of what um, uh, Brzezinski says you need to control if you're going to control the planet and you're just ticking them off if you carry that map around with you and, and watch the television news you will see them coming up and what they're doing for instance America is, is being demonized for doing all this but what they're doing is destroying America they're using America to, to, to push this on but the idea is to destroy it for, for this reason if you want a world government with total control of the, of the planet, you cannot have superpowers who have the economic and, and military might to say no to you. So we're in the process of uh, destabilizing and bringing down America militarily and uh, economically to absorb it into this global system. And we're going to see events unfold which are going to bring China and Russia into this too because um, they, anything that's powerful enough to say no to the world government is designed to be undermined and absorbed and by the way China, China society is the blueprint for global society they've been developing that under, around closed doors that's why there's so many connections between top American politicians like the Bush family and Kissinger and China and so the time's running out for America once it's done its job of being used, um, they'll destroy it uh, as, as the superpower it is now. And it's being done um, under the, um, if you like, the, the, the puppet period of Obama, who's really just a, a puppet, just that, just a puppet. And he's there to smile and, 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 and sell tyranny and control with a smiling face. But that's what's behind it. And you could put communism there too. Just the face to hide the real face that's going on. That's why nothing's changed. Do you remember Guantanamo Bay was going to be closed? Maybe he forgot. He's had a lot on his mind. Nothing's changed since one replaced the other. Nothing's changed. He's got, he's got worse in Afghanistan. This says they think he cares about them. <laughs> what we're looking at is presidential problem reaction solution and they played the American people like a violin Adolf Hitler said the great masses of the people will more easily fall for victims to a big lie than a small one what they did with Bush the Bush period was they created lots of problems not least the economic crash right at the end in September 2008 and also the invasions of Afghanistan and, and, and Iraq and so, so by the time we got to the next election with this guy, people are sick of, it's like, do something. And so he was sold as the solution to the problem. And all he did for nearly a year was say trigger words, meaningless words like change, hope, and something to believe in. The idea was that he never ever, and he didn't, specify what he meant by that in detail because the idea was it was a mass mind control operation you have to watch this in elections because it goes on in all countries they just did a major job in America this time the idea was for him to become an empty screen on which the population projected what they uh, believed was change hope and something to believe in he became a, a all things to all people that was the idea don't be specific until you get in as Adolf Hitler said, make the lie big, make it simple, keep saying it, and eventually they will believe it. Obama. 
Make the lie big, make it simple, keep saying it, and eventually they will believe it. Politics worldwide is getting like this now. Just trite phrases that mean nothing. I love you, you love me, I will get you stuff for free. Oh, thank you. We can believe in that. I found this, I think, sums up Obama. The wolf found that shepherd's clothing worked even better. And so we have a man of President Peace whose first act in office was to authorize the bombing of Pakistan and has vastly increased the military operation in Afghanistan, says he's pulled out of Iraq, just changed the name, 50,000 troops still there. Not a word from him about the horrors in Iraq of, uh, and, and Afghanistan of spent nuclear uh, f uh, fuel or, or, or spent nuclear uh, uh, material in the bombs and weapons that they've dropped on Iraq, which is having horrendous birth effects and other effects. The man is a complete fraud and fortunately, his honeymoon period has not been anything like as long as it promised to be. He's just another puppet of the system. And he's just uh, there to push it on while appearing to be different. The Obama rule, ignore the words and watch the actions. And when you watch the actions, woo. Just to show you nothing's changed, by the way, this is um, Bush and here's Obama. You know they say, they say if you want to know what's going on, follow the money. I think you follow the Bono. I think you follow the Bono. Look at him. He's everywhere. All these, all these people involved, Bono's shaking hands with them. I don't know. So anyway, we've been moving around down this uh, timeline of, of the control. And they're, they're coming into the point where they want to introduce the, the, what they've been working towards, this structure. Um, and uh, that's what's unfolding now. And to underpin this control system, they're bringing in this Orwellian global state, this police state. And this is not for the masses, because the masses are no problem unless they wake up and see what's going on. This control system is for those who have woken up and are waking up to see what they couldn't see before and realize what's going on. In Britain, you, um, on an average day walking through a town or city, will be seen by 300 and growing security cameras. They've now got satellite technology and other technology which can take your number plate and put it through a, a computer and get everything there is to know about you as you go along the road. The satellite system is um, much further advanced than we're given, uh, allowed to know. They're bringing in these, uh, these systems of uh, all body scanners. Some people say it would be terrible, you know, people will see my naked body. What I say is, if people see my naked body, it serves them right. That's what I say. <laughs> but. The radiation they give off is something different. And, and, it, and if you are involved in paedophile rings, what better than these, this system? Here's another one, Kissinger. <laughs> We're seeing the, I don't, again, I'm, I've, I've not been in um, Czech Republic long enough to, to comment on this. I'm talking about what I'm seeing in country after country, including my own in America, where the police are becoming more and more militarized. They're becoming an arm of the military. This is happening everywhere uh, that I, I go. And we're, gi we're giving policemen in places like America, other European countries and Britain, these tasers, which give off 55,000 volts and have killed many people uh, around the world, not least people with heart conditions and stuff. And people have said to me, well, that's bad for the taser with people dying. No, it's not. They want people to die from the taser. Because when people start dying from the taser, when a, when a cop says, you do, a, do what I say or I pull the trigger, you do what he says. This is what it's about, fear. 